Thank you, Roger. So maybe not the most exciting topic, uh, certainly after some of the great talks we've just heard. Um, but I think this is important for how we look at overall resource utilization. And if you look at the way healthcare financing is going, uh, I think around the world, but particularly in this country, uh, resources are something we're going to have to manage more and more efficiently. Uh, these are my disclosures, none of which relate to um, what we're discussing here. So we do have continued reduction in the resources available to us, whether it's beds or staffing. We're getting continuous reductions in reimbursement. Um, as we know with uh, sequestration recently uh, and reductions in cost from the government, uh, if you're doing 40% Medicare in your hospital, that's 1% off your bottom line. Most hospitals in the US run on a 1% to 3% margin. So that may be their margin gone just as of a, a couple of weeks ago. So reimbursement continues to trend down in absolute and also in more subtle ways. Uh, and while costs in many uh, situations are going up, training I'm not going to go into. Now the airline industry has been used as an analogy for healthcare uh, and probably overused. Uh, I'm not sure the car industry is a perfect analogy either, but I think it's probably better uh, in that we see patients going through, we build different models of car and do different operations and maybe no two cars are the same. Everyone has a different color or slightly, fin slightly different finishing. Uh, and you see that whether you look at results within a hospital, looking at one physician or one group of surgeons, or internationally, and these are data from Henrik Kalot uh, within multinational survey. And you can see the variability in length of stay after colon resection from 7.8 days uh, in hospital or seven days after surgery in the US to 10 or 13 days in different countries in Europe. And if you were to put Japan up on the screen, uh, it'd be in the 20s. So culture is one of the things that is involved. Now industry, led by Toyota and the concept of Six Sigma, has got at standardization of process and reduction of variability, such that Six Sigma is where everything is an acceptable product, meaning in the center of this graph, except anything outside the sixth standard deviation. So that's a fraction of a point of a percent. In healthcare, often, and perhaps particularly for colorectal surgery, we're probably at about a half sigma, uh, with a lot of variability and 30% complication rates, depending on how you define them. So what causes this variability? Well, there are some things we have no control over. I mentioned length of stay in Japan. National culture is something that is practically uh, impossible to control and will certainly take a generational shift to improve it. Practice profile, case mix, and oftentimes patients come through the door and we can't do much about that. We have some control over the operating facility. You choose where you work. You have some choice over the equipment that you get to use uh, and you have more choice and more ability to influence uh, the team that you work with. We have most control as surgeons over the perioperative care plans that we use and over the, the surgical techniques that we use. So when you look at length of stay as a metric for quality and resource utilization, one of the primary things that drives that uh, for us as GI surgeons uh, is postoperative ileus. And while we understand a lot about the pathology, we don't really know what ticks it off in some particular patient. Some patients will have an extensive abdominal operation uh, and recover very quickly. And sometimes, every now and again, you'll do an easy, straightforward case. Uh, and they have a very slow recovery. Uh, this is some work from Tony Bauer, who's a basic scientist at University of Pittsburgh who has an interest in this. Uh, and this just shows the complexity of the inflammatory uh, and biological pathways involved in postoperative ileus and why no one drug or no one process is going to fix it. It's as complex as any inflammatory pathway. So this is something Henrik, uh, Kalet and I and Tony Senegor uh, worked on uh, quite a long time ago now and we put together a consensus group uh, and came up with some definitions and some suggested management pathways. And we've also been able to work on some medications that may help. This is an interesting data set which we published on a while ago. And this is from a pooled group of control patients in a series of randomized control trials. And these are all open colectomies. And uh, so the simplest thing that we do, open segmental colectomy. And you can see their time to recovery with the percentages of patients that had nausea, obviously early postoperative nausea, and vomiting uh, are common. And then if you look at, we defined it for this study as GI uh, two, which was meaning uh, tolerance of diet and passage of stool, 
Uh, if you look at GI2 recovery, which is the red figure, you can see that the median is about day four, uh, and that was trailed about 24 hours later uh, by discharge at about day five with a mean close to day six. And so this is open segmental colectomy, the simplest thing that we do. And actually for a multi-center trial, because this was across a lot of hospitals, uh, these are not bad numbers and, and outcomes. And we had a fairly standardized post-operative care plan. But even though these are the easy cases, hopefully doing well, you can see that about 12% were readmitted to hospital. 13% had a hospital stay over a week, meaning that fully a quarter of patients had something that none of us, if we were the patient, uh, would think of as a perfect uh, post-operative result. So Henrik and Linda Bassa, who's one of his colleagues in Denmark, uh, have obviously published uh, extensively on this. And this is one of a series of papers that they've published. And um, they've compared a conventional local district general hospital in this paper uh, to their multimodal academic medical center. Now their volumes are low. It's only 40 colon resections a year, so less than one a week. Uh, on this service, and so that's obviously easier to have resources to look after, but the results were impressive. Patients moved their bowels earlier, and um, they had a short length of stay, whether you look at mean or median, and this is the shortest mean length of stay uh, in the literature after open colectomy. Complication rates, lower, but defined slightly differently. Leak rates, a little high perhaps, but consistent between both. But the readmission rate is a real problem, and this uh, was one of the things that uh, drove Henrik to redefine his, his goal for discharge uh, because the readmission rate of 20% is certainly an outlier for us in the US and would be an outlier for Medicare uh, and is much, much higher uh, than most of the international literature. So I thought I'd show you some of our experience with this and this is some of our early work looking at enhanced recovery pathways uh, done in late uh, 99 uh, and got published about a year or so later. Um, and this is a consecutive uh, series of 60 open cases. Uh, and this was done very much to match Henrik's first paper, which came out a couple of months before, uh, with 60 open cases. And a lot of IBD, hence the younger age than one might expect. But more than half of these were having pelvic surgery, not just simple colectomies. And in fact, more than half of them had had a previous major laparotomy, such as this fellow with Crohn's. And still, with the standardized care pathway, we were able to get a mean hospital stay of about 4.3 days, uh, which short of Henrik's 3.3-day uh, paper uh, was the same as his initial paper and the same as several papers that came into the literature around that time. So standardized care pathways, you can hit around 4.3 to 4.5 days for open uh, for at least certain populations of patients. And our readmission rate was pretty respectable at about 7%. We applied this then to a lot of different uh, types of patients. Uh, this is just one of many papers. Uh, Yehuda Kariv was the first author, and we looked at 100 ilioanal pouches uh, compared to traditional uh, care pathways. And whether you looked at mean or median stay, we took about a day off length of stay. Uh, readmission rates were similar, and yes, it's higher. This has actually been published on once since then. Again, uh, proctocolectomy with ilioanal anastomosis does tend to have a slightly higher readmission rate. Uh, but you see that we also uh, took a um, little more than 10% off cost, and that can also be a fairly significant reduction. We studied it with a few randomized control trials, and it tends to be uh, that it takes a day off length of stay, particularly if surgeons are experienced with these pathways, and the patients aren't disadvantaged. Their pain scores going home are the same, their satisfaction if you measure it on a Likert scale is the same, and the readmission rate uh, did not tend to be any higher. At least in our hands, epidurals didn't help. Length of stay stayed at about five days in this um, randomized trial, um, whether patients had a PCA or an epidural. And actually, if you look at the meta-analysis and you look at the literature, while epidurals, if they're opioid-free, and that's an important point, epidurals can accelerate time to GI recovery. They actually don't shorten hospital stay. Readmission rates which is the fear of many when they start using these pathways that the readmission rates will bounce up. Well, it tends not to be the case, whichever paper you look at, and there are more since then, and this is a one meta-analysis looking at this group. So we talked yesterday and somewhat today, uh, but particularly yesterday, about standardizing operative technique, and so how does laparoscopy fit in? Well, so we and others have published on different pathways, but it's a combination of preoperative information, perioperative standardization, and then early 
uh, diet. So patients eat the day after surgery. They get oral, oral medicines the day after surgery. Uh, any tubes or catheters would come out the day after surgery. And you set them up uh, for an early discharge. Uh, this is a, a kind of consensus report that we put together, and Michelle Adamino, when he was working with me, uh, worked on this. Uh, and again, Henrik participated in this, and we combined it with a meta-analysis. And it, it pooled uh, some, of, some of the data that I'm going to show you. And so what we were able to do when we combined laparoscopy was drop about half our length of stay off open cases. Uh, and this is older data from about 10 years ago. Again, I mentioned to you dropping about 10% uh, off our cost structure. And so when we put that into a department where we were doing a few hundred cases uh, a quarter, you can see that these fast-track care pathways cut about 40% off the hospital bed utilization. But when you combined it with laparoscopy, it cut about 60% off the bed utilization. So now when we combine laparoscopy and open over a large number of patients, uh, we've got an average stay uh, four days or less. Uh, and it changes a little bit depending on the population of patients, whether you look at a low anterior uh, or totals, totals tend to stay a little longer. So more recently then, and this is actually the first year after I moved to Case Western, uh, the first 120 cases, uh, we had a length of stay of 3.7 days, and you can see that very few use skilled nursing or home care, because that's obviously one way that you can uh, acceleration, accelerate patients getting out, uh, which may not be appropriate. And what you also see is that the patients who went home within 48 hours of surgery had the lowest use of skilled nursing and home care. And they also had the lowest readmission rate. So 8.5% for the whole population. The patients who went home in the first 48 hours, 5%. And the patients who stayed four days or more, about 14%. So we've done this for many things as well. And this is a, an older paper uh, looking at laparoscopic resection. And Ralph Allen and Setmo is in the audience uh, spent some time with me and, and put this paper together. Uh, and you can see that for these proctectomies, uh, and this was uh, just uh, my cases at the time, we were able to get a length of stay, a mean length of stay of about three days. Again, Tony and I looked to see could epidurals help us for the laparoscopic cases, and it didn't. We were hitting around two and a half days at that stage. This was more colectomies than proctectomies, and hence the length of stay is a little bit shorter. Um, but epidurals didn't help us. So are there other things that we can add to the process? Well, there was a little discussion about it yesterday, um, but this is a, a paper where we pooled early experience. Uh, Antonio participated in this, and Harry Papa Constantino, uh, and Deb Nagel, and I. And we put our, our experience together with single port to see if that would help. Uh, and certainly you can do it, and you can do it through stomacytes and all of those other things. And Dan showed some nice, nice data yesterday. Uh, but certainly in th at that stage, it didn't significantly change any of our length of stay, and we have found the same since that time and published on it. We've looked at local anesthetics. Can local anesthetics be used? Uh, and this is a comparative series we did looking at uh, either no local anesthetic, local anesthetic into the wound, or local anesthetic into the wound and intraperitoneally, and there were no significant difference between groups. What's been most interesting uh, recently uh, is the use of TAP blocks or transversus abdominis plane blocks, uh, which we now do under laparoscopic control. And so this is a comparative series, and uh, actually this is in press now, and there's a couple of other papers we have going through on this. But you can see the mean hospital stay, uh, and this is for a case match series, the mean hospital stay uh, was 3.2 days, and this is, includes colon and rectal resections. With about not too many going home on day one, only 4% and 19% on day two, very similar to that older paper I showed you from 2008. Well, using TAP blocks and actually oral uh, Tylenol at high dose uh, in combination with the TAP blocks, uh, we've dropped our mean length of stay down to about 2.1 days. Uh, and when you look at a very uh, large series, it's actually about 2.4. So it's been quite consistent with a median length of stay of two days. And you can see that now a third uh, of my patients would go home the day after surgery, another third would go home two days after surgery, and the remainder would go home three or more days after surgery. And obviously the patients with the stomas uh, tend to be in this day three plus group. Uh, but getting an overall hospital stay of around uh, two, two and a half days. So by combining all these different things in an additive uh, manner, uh, we can achieve fairly reproducible uh, results. Uh, Debbie Keller uh, is working with me at the moment, and this is a paper we've submitted to 
uh, DCNR, looking at process control. So again, industrial type methodology to look at process and variability in outcome. And you can see the addition of the tap block has reduced the variability uh, in these two uh, ch control chart analysis of, of patients uh, prior to tap blocks and since tap blocks. So I'd conclude um, by suggesting uh, that by combining perioperative care pathways with laparoscopy, uh, we can do the safest and most cost efficient uh, surgery. Uh, I think we can truly only realize the potential of laparoscopy when we do use it in combination with standardized care pathways and enhanced recovery pathways. And I think we have the opportunity to standardize care between institutions, centers, and internationally. Uh, and as part of that, uh, develop new standards for care and new standards for safe discharge. I'll finish with a slide uh, just showing uh, next year's meeting. Uh, and if any of you are interested, we have a desk out front for the International Society. And if you go, uh, you can either be emailed information about membership. And we'd love you to join us uh, in Paris next year in June uh, when we're having the next meeting of the Society. Thank you very much.